Guess what? Here's a big surprise. President Obama wants another big tax hike. That according to his pre-Super Bowl interview last evening. And he pretends that the sequester wasn't his idea. Remember, this whole across-the-board budget cut deadline was all his plan going back to 2011. How about that? Now, the Republican House is not going to allow any more tax hikes. The president needs to blame somebody else. I think I'm right about the Republican part, but let's get some expert uh, knowledge. We have Blake Zeff, former Obama presidential campaign aide. We have Heather Higgins of the Independent Women's Voice, president and CEO. And Phil Musser is former executive director of the Republican Governors Association. Um, I know that Obama, Heather Higgins, is going to raise taxes again. Harry Reid said the same thing over the weekend. You know that was coordinated and um, probably wrecked the stock market. That's the one thing that worries me. But will the Republicans absolutely oppose it? That's the big question. I think that they will. I think Boehner has a different view on the realities of negotiating with Obama than he did before. Uh, it's a bit like Lucy with the football. You think that you've got an agreement that we've taken care of the revenue piece now, and Obama explicitly said that he wasn't going to raise revenues through what Boehner originally suggested, which was loophole closings and rate restructuring. But now they're back again. And what people need to understand is there's no amount of tax increase that's enough for Obama. It's going to be carbon taxes. It's going to be VAT taxes. There is an unlimited appetite for increased revenue, not achieved the way you and I would like to achieve increased revenue, which is by actually growing the pie, doubling the salaries of everybody here, and increasing your revenue that way. But they do it through games of rate increases and closed loopholes without the necessary underlying right, They forgot. Reforms. I mean, they have a rate increase and closing loopholes. The idea of a true pro-growth tax reform was closing loopholes and rate cuts. Right, cuts. They forgot that part, but they didn't really forget that because... Um, Blake, Any more than he forgot jobs in his inaugural that, address. That's just right. kind you, of disappeared. This is part... Uh, what I see in the same day is a very scary thought. In the afternoon on the Super Bowl, I see the president talking tax hikes. That morning on one of the Sunday shows, uh, news shows, I see Harry Reid talking tax hikes. So once again, the Democrats want to raise taxes. Isn't that true? That's really the strategy here. No sequester, no budget cuts, no entitlement form, just raise taxes. And that same night, the lights went out in the Super Bowl. So <laughs> well, just to complete yeah, that, was, that day. That was Beyonce <laughs> meets Solyndra. <laughs> right, exactly. And Beyonce's a friend of Obama. It all comes together. Um, I know you guys think. Uh, That's not bad, actually. Thank you. But can thank we go Back to yeah, let's get, back to the, let's get back to right, the I want to lose that train so, of thought. Right, so look, what happened, in, on, I think it was December 16th, December 17th, we were in the middle of this fiscal cliff debate. Here's where we were. John Boehner put forward a trillion dollars in revenue, right? Heather just said this was true. 800 it was, billion. It was, I, think it was, I think he actually got to as high as a trillion. Eight, 800. Was okay, 800. We'll it's say, okay. We'll it's say a big 800. number. We'll say 800. Almost cost true. him his speakership. Right, it was a big, big number. And what was part of that? He talked about uh, closing loopholes. He talked about uh, limiting uh, deductions. He talked about raising rates on investment income. These are the types of things that no. John Boehner no, no, floated. No, 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 no. Boehner talked about lowering rates. That's lowering. the part you missed out. See, Heather was outlining what real pro-growth tax reform is. Lower marginal tax rates, and then, yes, put a cap on the deductions. I'm for that, but that's not where they went. You all got your tax hacks. Now, they said, uh, let me go to bring Phil in this. Um, Obama said yesterday, not, no more tax rate hikes. He right. did say that, right. but we're going to have all these uh, caps on deductions or right. whatnot. But he's basically, what's the difference at this point? He's basically <laughs> aiming at more taxes. He'll, right. take an, uh, he'll take another trillion dollars in taxes, no problem. No problem. I mean, I think it, this is poll-tested kabuki theater at this point right. in time. I mean, this is all about the gamesmanship in Washington, about establishing the benchmarks for negotiations going into the next round. I Where mean, are the Republicans today? Why didn't I see the, the wall to wall on Politico, on the Hill.com, on National Review? Why didn't I see the entire Republican House leadership, all friends of ours, why didn't I see them say that they will never assign, they will never buy into another tax hike? Did well, they, well, where were they? Did they forget the show? No, 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 to be they fair. They hung over Mitch, from the Mitch, Super Bowl? Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell took to the Senate floor today and gave a really Mitch strong... Mitch McConnell's terrific. A, Mitch McConnell a really, is terrific. A, 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 really, a really strong defense on this issue. But it's the House that matters. He's outvoted the Senate. Well, in the, well, in the House today... Chuck Schumer no, beats him. Let me say what they're talking about in the House today. Where are the House guys today? The, the, where was Mr. Boehner? Where was Mr. Cantor? I'm going to answer that question. Where they were was talking about the fact that Obama doesn't have a budget and hasn't put one forward, oh. and that's a little bit of a problem. So right. both Ryan, Boehner, Canner, the whole bunch of them were spending the day talking about the fact that, you know, President Roosevelt put together and delivered a budget on time.
time a month after Pearl Harbor. George Bush delivered a budget a month after the 9-11 uh, attacks. Obama has not delivered a budget for this country and has no plans to in the foreseeable future. Sometime in the next few weeks, it, it put the it put House Republicans are passing a bill know, to essentially mandate the president the to pass Obama, a budget. Today was the day that Obama missed the deadline yet again. For a budget. So that was their focus, yes. It's a yawn. It is the a fact yawn. The fact that it, it missed the deadline. What I want to know is that the GOP will absolutely stand tall. They're trying to rebrand the party. Yeah. There's certain principles not to be rebranded, like lower spending, which is actually good for the economy in the long run, and lower marginal tax rates, which is also good for incentives in the long run. I just was a little disappointed today that the Republicans didn't come out and say that. That's all. I just no, want them to say that. I hear Karl Rove attacking the party and just shoot him. Well, he may not even have him turn around. Just shoot him. But what I really want is the GOP House leadership to say, guess what? No new taxes. Well, the New York Times is giving Karl Rove a big wet kiss for, for that <laughs> gift yeah. on the weekend. But I think a lot of us feel that it's an enormous mistake, but we understand why he's doing it, given his funding base. But um, the, the problem with this tax discussion is that it's all, as you said, a complete gimmick. It's poll tested. It's all about things that we know don't work. Just a little bit of history that actually McConnell was superb at bringing up today. A little reminder about the luxury tax uh -huh. in 1990. Right. It cost 30,000 jobs. It cost more in unemployment benefits and lost tax revenue from those workers who lost their jobs making the luxury yachts and the corporate no, I think than was brought in by I the think luxury tax. McConnell's been great. And Unfortunately, he needs and they cavalry repealed, they re And they were, to Heather's point, they repealed the tax three years later. Right. Truly idiotic. Same, same, same issue with carried in. But I want to ask Blake, the yeah. strategy here is what I don't get. President, no, they basically want to take sequester out. They want to rip up the sequester. Mm -hmm. Even though the president and Jack Lew, his former budget director, who is now going to the Treasury, uh, who should not be going to the Treasury, but they cooked up the sequester. Across the board, automatic spending cut. Now, that thing's been wheedled down since five months have already gone past. It isn't going to be uh, even 100 billion. It'd be about 60 billion this year. Okay. They know that. But when I hear them say we're going to raise taxes rather than a sequester, I say to myself, what's well, the agenda here? If no votes are taken or passed, the sequester goes through. What can they possibly be thinking? The tax thing just inflames everybody. A couple of things. One is, and we've talked about this before, and I know you don't agree with me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Democrats don't fear the se sequestration as much as you guys think. That's because uh, I, I know people. You. Okay, so okay. maybe I've. They want to rip headway. apart the Defense Department. Right, and, and, and so. And so it's, it's not that they just security. want to spend money for the sake of spending money, which yeah, I know is a caricature. It's that, it's that they don't mind cutting spending to military stuff. It's they want to protect the safety, the social safety net yeah. and things like that. I agree. And sequestration doesn't really touch that, touches military. So they're fine with it. So keep that in mind as you're. And why are they all voting again? Why is Reed? Reed. I mean, the guy hardly ever talks. When he does talk, he's barely copacetic. But I heard him on this talk show say, "We don't want the sequester. Instead, we want to change everything, rip it up, and have at least half be tax hikes." And that's basically what the president said. What can they be thinking? If nothing happens, if the House not does nothing, the sequester automatically goes through. Do you get that? Yeah. Does Obama get that? This is what. This What's he trying to say? This is what I think the game is. This is what I think is going to happen. I think you may, they're going to try to get something where they get some of this tax reform, close some of these loopholes on, on, on one side. And on the other side, I would not foreclose the possibility that Obama once again floats this chain CPI they, idea for Social Security. They're not going to get anything this time around. Next year, I have no idea. Next year is really far away. You ever heard the expression, one day at a time? Yes. This is one year at a time. Over. Finito. The Republicans, unless the Republicans are really going to commit suicide. I mean, I guess that's always possible. But I don't think they're going to sign on to any tax hikes this year. Even if they, uh, even if they get reforms to social programs like that. That's not going to happen. I mean, it's a month away. That's, that's it's less whole... than a month away. <laughs> this is February 4th. The thing goes off March 1st. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it... $65 billion more or less a spending cut in our lifetime. Can you imagine that? Well, what it's actually a pro-growth measure. <laughs> it is a pro-growth measure, exactly what it is. Spending cuts are pro-growth, right. sorry. And, in Give fact, Republicans word. don't fear it as much as the Democrats like to think we do. Right. Um, be precisely because we think you have to start somewhere, and there is fat to cut. Um, but the reality is, is that revenues are pretty much on track, historically, with GDP. It's spending that's massively out that's of right. whack. But you've got a president who says, we don't have a spending problem. So he's coming from this, from a perspective of somebody who really does not believe that economies can grow, that the 
the pie can be grown, that it's about redistribution, it's about re sharing, it's about increasing the size of the pie that the government takes through different forms of taxation and revenue in order to further their particular goals. And when does the bad tax come? When does the value added tax come? They're going they're gonna go for it. They'll never get the cap they'll never get the cap and trade tax, but the value added tax they're they're gonna push very hard for that and on I think top of the income tax. They're gonna try and present that as a compromise. A compromise. Oh right. my god. All right, we're gonna stick around, We've got something else covered. Blake, Heather and Phil stay with me because raising your taxes isn't the only agenda item for the Obama team. We're also learning the Obama Democrat gun control plan. Here's a hint. They ain't gonna get a lot of what they want. Later in the show, if you think investing